Dear President Dahl, dear friends of the EPP family, what a special day. You can imagine, first of all, for me, but I think for all of us, as EPP is the largest political family on this continent, we decide about our future. All Europe is watching us in this moment. I want to, first of all, thank again, Alex, for the fair competition during the last weeks we had and we saw. I stand here not only to ask you for the support as being a candidate. I stand here to ask you for a mandate, a mandate to change Europe, to open a new chapter for our European dream. My Europe starts in Wildenberg. You saw it already in the video. It's my home village, a small village like thousands of others in the European Union. I see there's a primary school where I have mixed feelings because I hadn't always done my homework when I went to school. There is a bakery where I bought my first sweets. There is the room where we played with our band and I got the first time the idea what it means to play in a team, to be in a team. What do people in such a village in Wildenberg think about the European Union? Dear colleagues, they love Europe. No doubt about this. But the European Union? A lot of people today see the European Union mainly as a project for the high skilled, for those who speak several languages, who work for a few years in London, then in Brussels, then in Madrid. The elites. And dear colleagues, this Europe of today must become a Europe of our citizens. I want to have a Europe which is respecting the interests of the citizens which is protecting the interests of the citizens and where people in Europe feel at home in Europe. That is what I want to achieve. Such a Europe, dear friends, such a Europe starts with listening to the people, picking up the concerns of people. Again, being back in Wildenberg, when I'm in a service in my Catholic church, next to me there are old people with wheelchairs. And behind these wheelchairs, there are women from abroad, women from abroad who take care about these old people. I must tell you that these women had to leave their home to earn money in Bavaria. Dear colleagues, we have not yet a really united European Union. The living conditions, the standards of healthcare differ a lot in the European Union. People feel as second class Europeans in some of the regions of Europe. And that's why I dream of a Europe where students consider to go, first of all, to Bucharest and Krakow and not always to Oxford or to Harvard. And a Europe where we never give up to create good living conditions in the south, north, in the east, in the west, simply for everybody in the European Union. Such a Europe, dear friends, would create a feeling of being at home. I give you I give you a second example for what I feel as concerns. When I leave my apartment in Brussels and I go to the European Parliament, I pass by the subway station where one of the terror attacks in Brussels happened. And I still have the day in mind when Mercedes, my head of cabinet, called me and she told me, Manfred, we are checking all our assistants, all our staff members, whether they are fine, whether they are alive. And she told me, we are missing one trainee. We cannot reach him. Existential fears, a whole city under shock, like in Madrid, Berlin, Paris, Brussels, London. Dear colleagues, today we know that the lack of cooperation, the lack of exchange of data made it so easy for the terrorists to attack us. I dream of a Europe that cares about the victims. It fights with all means against terrorists and leaves no room for any kind of national egoism when it is about the security of our citizens. And that is a, a Europe where people can feel at home. I give you a third example for the concerns of the people. And that will be the top issue for next year's elections in 2019. Migration, an issue we discussed during the last three years intensively in the European Union. I was during the summer break in Bulgaria. I visited Boyko Borisov. Boyko showed me the border between Bulgaria and Turkey. There is a small river 
On the one side, there is a 50 meter high Turkish flag. On the other side, there is a 50 meter high Bulgarian flag. So Boyko showed that here Europe starts in a way. Two continents meet there. And dear colleagues, Boyko Borisov showed me that he guarantees that there is illegal migration stops. We have there no illegal migration on this border. And he told me you can do so if you have the political will to decide to protect our borders. And dear friends, I want to create this. The EPP must be the party of strict border control. We have to assure to our European citizens that nobody can cross the external border of the European Union without a passport. Illegal migration has to be stopped, and this will create a feeling of being at home in a safe and in a protected home, dear friends. And a final, a final example, a final concern. To show people what we can achieve if we work together. Cancer, dear colleagues. 40 percent of us in this room 40% of the Europeans will face the risk of cancer during their life. My brother died due to cancer. And dear colleagues, I have the talks in mind. When we listened to the doctor, when you don't want to hear anymore what is the reality, when the whole family, all the friends feel so helpless, so powerless, without any hope. Imagine, dear friends, we would combine all our money, all our research capacity, and all our databases inside of the European Union, and would create a master plan in fight against cancer. That we as Europeans would be the first who can cure cancer. Dear colleagues, it's not only about innovation. It's not only about innovation. That is a cold world. It's not only about to be the creative lab of the world to have better products and to earn more money. No, the ambitions of Europe must be that we contribute, that this world will be a better place in the future. A home which where people all over Europe can be proud of. That is what I want to achieve. Only a few examples, dear friends, about what we can do together. Always starting with the interests of the people, with the concerns of the people. That must be in the center of the political process in Europe. Dear colleagues, uh, we feel that there is at the moment politically more behind. One thing is to take into account the concerns. But the second aspect is that we are living in times of very dramatic and very quick changes. Demographic development, globalization, digitalization, we all are aware about this. And having these times of changes, these times of uncertainty in mind, I think it is extremely important to answer not only the concrete issues, it's also important to give an, people an idea that we as EPP we have a good and stable fundament for the future. We know about our identity, about what we believe in. And let me use this as a second point I want to point out today in my speech. Let me use a picture. Let's fly together through Europe. You start in Athens and you approach Dublin. You start in Lisbon and arrive here finally in this beautiful town of Helsinki. You will find so much different things, culture, languages. We have different kind of food. So Europe is so colorful, so rich, so diverse. It's so good to be a European. But we have one thing in common. In every village, in every city you fly through, with a few exemptions, you will find in the middle of these villages and cities a Christian church. When I use this picture, I am heavily attacked in social media that this sounds, when I remind about the Christian heritage of this continent, that sounds so old-fashioned, so conservative, so backward-looking. I tell you, I don't care. I think that it is important to have a fundament. I think that it is important to describe the fundamental values of this continent. We are proud of this, and we will protect these values, dear friends. But it is important. But it is important, dear colleagues, to define them, to implement them in today's reality. We are Christian Democrats. And as Christian Democrats, we are aware about the importance of every human being. We do politics for every citizen, regardless of their social background, their age, their education, their place of birth. We as Christian Democrats, we formed today's Europe, Europe which is for us a synonym for freedom, 
freedom of expression, of press, of religion. We as Christian Democrats, we believe in a Europe of subsidiarity. Not every issue in Europe is an issue for Europe. We have a lot of respect to our national colleagues in the national parliament, even in the regional and local communities. You, dear colleagues, we, we don't accept discrimination, but for example, family law is a poorly national responsibility and Europe should take care about this. Dear colleagues, we as Christian Democrats, we are not egoists. We know about our global responsibility. For example, when I see that in developing countries, children must work for products in our European supermarkets, then I think that this is not acceptable anymore. Children must have a school and not a job, dear colleagues and friends. And we as Christian Democrats, we believe in economic freedom. We discussed it yesterday in the round table. More investments to create 5 million new jobs, especially for the young generation of Europe. But on the other hand, to keep the social face of Europe, the social market economy alive. And finally, we as Christian Democrats, we believe in close cooperation with our neighbors. No doubt about this. But I think it's time to define the final composition of today's European Union. And that means for me, that Turkey cannot become member of the European Union. We have to define these clear criteria. Dear colleagues, that is what Christian democracy means today. And may I remind you that 60 years ago, the socialists in Germany voted against the idea of Konrad Adenauer to work closer together with France. May I remind you that the Greens voted 30 years ago against the creation of today's single market. And may I remind you that the Liberals vote today against the legislation in a stronger fight against terror and more security on European level. So I don't need socialists, I don't need liberals, any kind of new movement or the Brussels bubble to tell us what is the future of Europe. We founded today's Europe, we did it as Christian Democrats, we are proud of this and we open the next chapter for this continent, dear friend. And then, and then there is a second answer on the qu a question on the, on the table, which we have to answer. One identity question is we are Christian Democrats. And the second is a question which is put on the table from Salvini, from Le Pen, from, yeah, the Polish PiS, for example. Your colleagues, they talk a lot about the nationality. They tell people, be proud about your nation, and we are a better nation than the others. That is, they tell the people, and they add, to hell with Europe. That is their message. And what is our answer? I want to quote, like Horst Seehofer did it yesterday, a former president of my party, Franz Josef Strauss. And he said already in the 60s of the last century, Bavaria is my home, Germany is my nation, and Europe is my future. And I don't allow anybody of these nationalists and egoists that say create a split between these identities. They belong together for us, and we are proud that we achieved this togetherness between the identities. Dear colleagues, stable ground. And when we talk about the future, then I want to add a third point. First is concrete issues, concerns of people. Second is identity. And the third point is how we do politics, how we do European politics. And there, dear colleagues, the first and most important thing is when we listen to the Brexit campaign, they told people, I want to have my sovereignty back. And it worked. People feel at the moment not connected to Europe, not involved. And we have to change this. The only way to have a good future for our European dream is to make Europe democratic. We did it already last time with Jean-Claude Juncker. I want to thank Jean-Claude. I learned a lot during the last four years under his leadership as a young group leader in the European Parliament. I think together, Jean-Claude, with all the others, with Donald Tusk, with Antonio Tajani, with the team in the European Parliament, we did a great job as EPP. Today, Europe is a better place than five years ago, and that is what we can deliver as an EPP success story towards the voters. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Today, we decide about the next candidate for the elections. And the idea that the first time a parliamentarian, the first time the leader of the biggest group is running as commission president is also a symbol for more democracy in the European Union. That is what we have to do.
Then we have to add a program. It will be not my program, it will be our program. I want to talk with the associations of the party, with all the member parties. Together we can achieve a clear program, probably finally only five, six points, which we present as promises to the voters what they get when they vote for the EPP, to make it clear and to show all the differences to the other political parties in the European landscape. And finally, I am a bridge builder. That is part of my political DNA. Not theoretically, I and we did it in the European Parliament together with the presidency, with the coordinators, with all the national delegation leaders and rapporteurs. We are the largest group in the European Parliament, but when it is about the voting behavior on legislation, we are the most united group in the European Parliament. I am proud of this achievement that we kept Europe together. We did it together. <laughs> Dear colleagues, this is our Europe, a Europe I work for, I fight for, I will always defend, I want to innovate and I love. I am a European. I want to open a new chapter, not a chapter of anger, but a chapter of optimism. Not a chapter of fears, but a chapter of hope. And not more nationalism, but a new chapter of solidarity. I ask you today for support, for your trust, for your mandate, to do it in my way, politics, European politics, and that is never about me, it's always about us. A few months ago, Paolo Rangel invited Lech Walesa to one of our meetings of the EPP. We were in Riga, in Latvia. We honored him for his successful fight for freedom. Together with Pope John Paul II, he made history. In his speech, he said, okay, that was important, but dear colleagues, that was history, that is history. So let's talk about the current issues on the table. Lech Walesa. Let's talk about the current issues on the table. And then he spoke about the enemies, Russia, China. He spoke about the enemies from inside, peace Poland, the Brexiteers, Le Pen. And then he said, 75 years old Lech Walesa. It's again time to stand up and fight. It's again time to pick the microphones and speak. It's again time to defend, to argue, to convince, to show the way towards a better, a stronger Europe, which serves to the interests of our people and will be a home for all Europeans. And dear colleagues, that is exactly what I want to do. Together with you, together with a true EPP family, like our predecessors as Christian Democrats in the last decades did, stand up, let's open a new chapter, let's start right here in Helsinki. Thank you so much.